everyone should be able to hear me. We will be getting started here in just one moment. Making sure everything is set up on my end, which it does look like it's good so far. If you're watching the stream right now, thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. We will be getting started in just a moment. I just need to finish setting up a couple things on my end before I switch the view over so that you guys can see the game. How's everyone doing? Let me know down in the chat. I will be able to see your chat here inside of my headset using OVR Drop. Hey, what's up, Time Manator? Thank you for joining. Just about ready to get started. <clears throat> Just doing a couple last minute little adjustments here. Select a movement style. You can change your preference from the settings menu at any time. Let me turn the game volume down just a little bit. All right, now let me switch it over so you guys can see the game. We're going to be starting from the very beginning of Seeking Dawn so that you guys can see it straight from the start, just like you would see it if you were playing at home. And there you go. You should be good to go. Let me know if you have any issues. You guys should be seeing the game just fine now. And I can see your chat right here on my controller inside VR. So if you have any questions, feel free to just shoot them into the chat and I will answer as I see them. Um, so here we go. We're at the opening section of Seeking Dawn. I started a new game, so you guys aren't going to get spoiled for anything near the end or in the late game phases. Um, so as you can see here, there's different movement types. There's blink which is um, similar to teleport, and then there's also just free locomotion walk movement with trackpad. <clears throat> hey MJ, um, at Upload VR, we got a review copy of the game and the embargo for streaming it was lifted for review copies already. Uh, we have been in communication with PR and the creators at Multiverse. So yes, we do have permission to stream the game. My review will be live at Upload VR tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You can read our full review for all my thoughts. I can't talk about my review at this moment, but I can talk about the opening segments up until a certain point in this stream. Um, so as you can see, the game's really pretty. I mean, it's easily one of the best looking VR games I've played, I would say, um, just from a pure visual quality for standpoint. Move the left trackpad or joystick to walk in a direction. So you can hold it down probably see my hand movements. here. Uh, what I do is I just tap on my on the trackpad. Uh, this does support Rift as well, but I just um, it I had my Vive plugged in, so that's the reason why I'm playing it on Vive. There's no particular reason. And so, like I was saying, it's it really is just a really pretty game. Hey, what's up, Gothic Villas? Thanks for joining. To sprint while using walking movement, swing your arms back and forth uh, see, as if this running. This is a this is a nice feature that I think other VR games should really um, in the system should adapt. So you know you have free trackpad movement with the uh, thumbstick or not the thumbstick, the trackpad here. Just move my thumb around. But if I want to sprint and actually move more quickly, what you do while moving is you just move both hands, like you're running, and your character just automatically starts sprinting. I think that's a really nice feature. I've seen some games use that for locomotion in general. Um, I like trackpad locomotion personally, but then the sprinting, doing that instead of holding a sprint button, I think feels really good. Something like Skyrim would benefit from that. For smooth rotation, hold down the right trackpad or joystick and drag the controller back and forth to rotate your character. For angular rotation, touch the trackpad or push the joystick to the right yeah. or left to rotate We're gonna go with in that direction. For sure. You can change the degree of angular rotation in the systems menu under settings. Definitely going smooth. I'm just physically gonna turn around for the most part. Um, I, I'll open up the settings here in a second. I think I can increase the speed. It's kind of slow right now. 
Lieutenant Weston, the captain's waiting for you on the bridge. Howdy, Captain. There you are. For a member of the Penumbra Corps, you sure took your sweet time. Why am I so tall? That's Captain Coleman, Lieutenant. Here we go. Captain, Skipper, ma'am. Uh, helmet height. So, we've arrived. Affirmative. Turn that we down. dropped out of FTL travel a few minutes ago, up. right over the target world. Take a look. The planet there where Major Walker's team disappeared. Quite a sight, isn't it? Yeah, that's faster. Hmm. Yep, that so about sums tall. it up. Let me see if I can. Initial scans suggest an abundance of natural resources, both above and below ground. It certainly explains the ACC's interest. Like kids in a candy store. How about yeah. Walker's team? Any idea better. where they went to ground? No like response so on any FCR frequencies, but we did pick up a distress signal. That'll be your first lead. We'll drop you right on top of it. Six weeks off the grid, and their beacon's still working? Not bad. Anything else? Yeah, that's all we've got. Better secure your backpack. This will be your last chance to do an equipment check before the drop. And while you're at it, you should down a few rations. Grab some from the stash. I know I'm too short. Dang it, okay. Let's... Make me... A little bit taller. How does that stack up? Okay, a little bit more... I want to be around the same height as the other characters. There we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, Plano, I think the reason um, is because I was in a cutscene. I couldn't get out of that dialogue. Okay, so, Bull, you're saying the game is a lot louder than my voice. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. I think I actually have the music off also. I'll turn that back on. Um, sound effects volume master volume down a little bit okay that should be a little bit better let me know if you want me to adjust it further and thanks bull I'll check that out after the stream audio ducking yeah the best of FCR cuisine bland and stale to use a consumable to restore your health or lower your hunger or thirst, equip it. Alright, so this is a giant wall of text. It's kind of hard to understand. But, um, so basically this is a, like, a health ration. It heals me. Um, so you just kind of point it up at your Press face. Press the menu button on your left controller to open the backpack. To navigate the backpack Here's menu, my full use backpack. your right controller. Point the controller towards an item to see its description. To move an item to your quick select... We're beginning our approach, Lieutenant. Your okay. weapon's in the pod. Head there when you're ready, and let's get this show started. Yes, ma'am. Talk to you from the ground. All right, so... Got the burger. I'll put that there. Got some water. I'll put that there. Okay, I don't think I have a gun yet. It doesn't look like I was given a weapon. Um... Hey, thanks, Bull. I'll definitely look into doing that. I am using OBS, so I'll check that out. All right. remember if I'm supposed to get a gun yet or not. I feel like I had a gun at this point the last time I played, but maybe I get it up here. Yeah, we ran through the pre-flight checklist. No problem. Headed to the surface. Drop pod sealed. Here we go again. Hey, got the gorilla. I'm on a standard vibe. I'm not Comms on check. a pro. Reading you loud and clear. Acknowledged. All systems are go. Lieutenant, time to get your feet wet. Initiating drop in three, two, one. <clears throat> really should not have eaten that ration. Man up. Trajectory is locked in. Time to landing. 
45 seconds. The hell? Uh, Coleman? That's Captain Not Col a good time. I think the maneuvering jets are gone. Coleman! Hang on. This part seemed a I, little wonky to me. We've I feel like it's... Monitoring for your pod. I don't have Last any sense of urgency or panic. They didn't really do Stay a good job of communicating, even you know, without that jets, I'm the supposed to be having landing. issues right now. Uh, partially. Not reassuring. Just brace Thank yourself. Thank you, Lather. What's Estimating up? Estimating your altitude at one kilometer. Ah, oh, shit. Status report. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Weston? Yeah, I'm here. Still in one piece. <sighs> okay. Our techs are looking into your equipment failure now. Status report? <sighs> Give me a minute. I need to run a systems check. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't really reach behind your head with either hand to Sync automatically function view. still operational. Good. Oops. God damn it, my flashlight. Where's my gun? Press the A button on the rift to open the quick select bar. If one of your hands is empty, move the hand to an item you wish to- Well, Where's damn. my gun? Oops. Touchdown confirmed. No hostiles in the immediate area. Though I don't see the distress beacon either. Stand by. You're not far from your original LZ. I'm sending the coordinates to your system. Roger that. Heading over there now. So whenever, you know, this is your basic pistol you get at the start of the game. Um, as you can see, the environments are really, really, you know, well detailed and just very pretty. Um, it definitely looks really good, even on the standard Vive, which is what I'm using. And I think I, um, I have a, I have a, I believe a 980 Ti, so it's not even a 1080 in this rig. And it still looks really, really nice. Um, so to open, you know, loot boxes and stuff, you just point at it with either hand, and you push the grip button, and then that you use that same button to pick up items. So I just picked up some medical nanobots that I can use to heal. Over here, some more ammo. Um, so here on my HUD, you can see up here at the top, the uh, little drumstick percentage is my hunger, and the water droplet is my thirst. Um, down below that are these big chunk bars. That's my health. Uh, my shield is full right now, so it's not displayed, but it'll be above my hunger and thirst. It'll show a line if my shield starts going down. And if it busts, then my HUD goes all red, and my health starts to go down whenever I take damage. Um, so on the left controller, I'm using Vive, so the controls would be different on Rift, obviously, and the Windows controller. But on Vive, the left menu button opens up my full backpack. So from here, I can drag and drop you know, the medical nanobots into the quick slot. I can equip armor whenever I get it. I can put different guns here. Um, I can see the construction menu, which I don't have a use for yet. The system settings, the database, which is kind of like the codex that has information about enemies and locations. Uh, my mission objectives are there. And then the menu button on the right controller brings up the quick menu. And as you can see, I accidentally equipped the cheeseburger. So go back and you just grab the gun, it equips it, and that's all you have to do. So if I wanted to put a cheeseburger in my left hand, as any, you know, any hardened military soldier, space cadet, marine does, you know, wielding a cheeseburger and a gun at the same time is the way to go, as you can see. And so to eat this, I just put it in my face, basically. I'm going to go ahead and just take it back. Yeah, so let me know if you guys have any uh, other questions. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play through the opening segments of the game here. I can't play too far. There is a point that I am got required something. to stop Lieutenant? at it's for a the stream. Moving to attack. Uh, but my full review will be up tomorrow, and the game releases on Thursday. Lieutenant, are you clear? Yeah, though I don't think we'll be getting along with the locals. You seem to have handled yourself nicely. What about the intelligence level? If there are aliens we can communicate with, those weren't it. What I just killed was probably no smarter than your average house pet. Smart enough to take out Walker's team? Not likely, though it depends on how many they ran into. For starters, I'm gonna need more ammo. You can worry about that later. Keep up your search for now. I hate these bugs. They have a habit of just appearing when you least expect it. And they're so frustrating. 
we don't see where they're coming from. And so I am playing in single player here, but the game does support full co-op with uh, friends, or you can open up a lobby for anyone to join. It is drop in, drop out. So if someone were to join this game with me, if I set it up as multiplayer and they join, then my progress would carry over between my save files and uh, all the loot that I get in someone else's game, I could carry over into my save file. Um, so it's a good system. Um, it works pretty well. How do I feel about the HUD? Is it annoying to have a virtual helmet overlay all the time? Um, Plano, I would say that it is I'm not very distracting. I actually like it so that it feels more immersive to me because it kind of feels like I'm wearing a helmet. But if you want in the settings, there's actually an option to turn that off. Um, where is it? Helmet overlay opacity. You can turn that down all the way. And I'm pretty sure, I thought there was a way to turn it off completely. But anyway, you can turn the opacity all the way down and for the HUD as well, so that it doesn't really get in the way as much. But I mean, for the most part, it doesn't bother me at all. If anything, I think it makes it feel more immersive. But I know not everyone would feel the same. I don't know what you're talking about, Lightbringer. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Gothic Villa, I would probably just ignore that person. They sound like a troll. So as you can see here, the you know the game's really, really nice visually, as I keep saying, but that's that's what sticks out to me the most with this game. And I'm not even playing on the highest graphic settings because um, this particular rig is not, you know, top of the line. Um, but you know, you could turn it up even more. It like I said, it looks really good. Um, I'm, as, a, a, as you can see, this is just a starter pistol, so it's not an automatic weapon. It's not very flashy. Eventually, you do get more guns. Um, you have to craft most of them, so there's a lot of resource gathering in this game. Um, so, you know, there's shotguns, there's, uh, like, assault rifles and SMGs and some, you know, kind of explosive weapons that do big damage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Muggus Majandra, the movement options are teleport and blink locomotion. I uh, personally, I use the smooth movement, but I'll go ahead and check those out real quick if you'd like. Uh, movement mode, blink, so you can set the blink range. I'll go ahead and turn that on. And so you can see here that, um, you know, is basically teleport movement. You just kind of point and click. And... The other movement option is called teleport. I'm not entirely sure how that differs. Captain, it looks like I'm headed underground. Any support you can give me down there? It looks there? like you kind of Until slowly creep forward, we won't then have you, eyes on you teleport. I'll try taking some seismic readings, I mean, it seems like basically the same thing. The yeah, so you can do teleport so or you can do smooth I'm movement. I block. personally we'll prefer smooth movement. We'll keep you apprised of the situation on the surface. Nothing will get in behind you without our knowing. And then to run, I have it set. So that, um, as you can see here, smooth movement with the trackpad. And if I want to sprint, I just move my arms like this, and my character starts sprinting. I think it's a pretty cool system. Works pretty well. Um, Plano, no, this is actually a um, this is actually a Unity game. It's not an Unreal game. I was kind of surprised by that. Hey, Bull. Yes, I'm using Restream. So I'm streaming on our YouTube channel and on our Twitch channel at the same time. So messages are pasted into both chats so that everyone can see all of the chat messages. <clears throat> hey, Hellfire. Um, yeah, it looks like, are, are you talking about the PS4 version based on your name? I'm not sure. Um, this is only coming to Rift Vive in um, Windows VR this week. Um, there's no date for the PSVR version yet, but it is supposedly in development. Um, we haven't seen any footage or details about that yet, but um, they have said that they are working on a PSVR version. 
Um, if, you, if you're interested in a final verdict, I would um, wait until my review goes live tomorrow morning. I can't talk about my full impressions on the game during this live stream because my review is embargoed. I can only show these opening moments here. Um, but yeah, tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific at UploadVR.com, my full review for Seeking Dawn will be up. That'll have a score. It'll have, you know, full breakdown. I think it's something like 1,200 words. I'm working on a video version of that review as well. Um, so check that out for sure if you're interested in more detailed thoughts on the game. All right, so these are called Alien Burgers, which I just thought is the funniest thing because they look just like McDonald's cheeseburgers. <laughs> I mean, like it, it even has a sesame seed bun and everything. I so I mean, it, I find it interesting that aliens, however many light years away on this strange, you know, exotic planet, they just happen to have their cheeseburgers that look exactly the same. I think that's just hilarious. So as you can see, my hunger is at fifty nine now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually eat this. And there you go. That bumped it up forty percent. And then here, it looks like I got some more ammo. And here I got some more water, another alien burger, another healing item. So I'm going to go grab this water bottle and drink that. And there we go. My thirst is now bumped back up. Hey, Plano, the beginning parts of the game... Um, um, I, it, it has a good first impression. It's a very pretty game, as I keep saying. Um, it feels very immersive. It's a lot of fun on co-op. If you have someone that you can play with, I definitely recommend playing it that way. I think that improves things quite a bit. Um, I do wish that you got more weapons more quickly and earlier on. You're stuck with just this pistol for quite a while because you need a lot of resources to make better weapons. Um, so I kind of wish that that was more plentiful and I wish ammo was a little bit more plentiful. Um, it, you know, it, it feels a little stiff. It's a little janky. You know, there's some, you know, glitches and clipping issues and stuff like that. But um, overall, it has a good first impression. It's a very pretty game. As I, you know, continue to say, that's easily the best part is the visuals. Um, Lightbringer, the difference in clarity between Oculus and Mixed Reality headsets. So for Mixed Reality headsets, the Windows ones, it really depends on which one you get. Um, the Acer, the HP, all of the lower end cheaper ones don't have as good of lenses. But the Samsung Odyssey, that actually has better lenses than the Vive or the Rift. It's um, one of the better headsets on the market in terms of visual clarity. So it just kind of varies depending on which one you get. Um, Hellfire, yes, I have tried the multiplayer. Um, if you have two Oculuses and two PCs, then you guys can totally play through the entire campaign side-by-side -side co op That is not a problem at all. Um, you can do that, no question. Um, I played through quite a bit of it with uh, Jamie Feltham from Upload VR. Um, so, yeah, I have tried the co-op. It works well. While we were playing online, we had a couple random people jump in with us, too. You can set it up to be private or public. It works really well. Hey, Adrian. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Gothic Villa. This will be $39.99 on Steam or Oculus Home. Um, on Thursday is when it comes out. It will be, uh, yeah, $39.99. I think there was a discount if you pre-ordered. Um, but as I was saying earlier, I obviously recommend um, waiting for their review, which goes live tomorrow morning. Um, that's, you know, obviously I'm going to say that because I would love for you guys to check out the review. <laughs> Crystal Caves, is that, um, I, I don't know the name of the, the section of the game that I'm in. Um, I, I'm going to be finishing it tonight before my review goes live. Um, I, I know I'm past, I think I'm past the Crystal Cave. I'm pretty sure I'm past that. I think there's six or seven zones with different sub zones within each zone. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm past that. 
Hey Gamertech, thanks for stopping by. I, um, as I said earlier, I cannot give my full impressions of the game yet. I am under embargo for my review. That goes live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. PT at uploadvr.com. But if you're interested in the opening segments, I can tell you that it has a really good first impression. Captain. Very pretty visuals. Um, gameplay is solid. No Co-op is very fun. Is it walkers? The model is a match anyways. One Qatar class deep space recon craft. It looks like it was brought down by weapon. That more or less affirms the ACC still being on planet. Doesn't explain why my drop pod lost power though. Could it have been something in the air? Something that gummed up our air intakes? No. The engineers have ruled out gaseous interference. The atmosphere is actually quite similar to what we're used to. Breathable, even, if you get tired of wearing your helmet. My helmet's fine where it is, thanks. Suit yourself. Just see if you can find anything of value. Hey, Hellfire. Uh, Farpoint's actually a really good comparison. Um, I would say the main difference is that Farpoint is very linear. Um, that game is all about going from point A to point B, shooting stuff. Um, it has a little bit better of a story in terms of the narrative being a little more developed, having better voice acting, better animation, um, more NPCs that you actually interact with and talk to. Um, so Farpoint has probably a stronger narrative overall, and it's a more linear game. This is very much open world. There's a lot of interconnected zones that you explore and you re-explore. You have to do mining, you have to get resources, you have to craft things, you have to worry about your hunger and your thirst, and um, you have to build things at your base, uh, you know, bolster your defenses, and um, you have to craft lots of different guns, uh, you know, get better gear and better armor. Um, so this is a more sandbox style game. Uh, it does have a linear path in terms of the story and, and the objectives, but you're free to explore and go kind of wherever you want to gather your resources as you play. Um, Lightbringer, best graphics so far in a VR game? That's a good question. Um, this is, the, the Seeking Dawn is definitely up there. Um, it, turn, it I guess it kind of depends on what style you prefer. If you're all about realism, then you know Skyrim VR with mods looks really good. Fallout VR with mods looks really good. Um, personally, I love um, you know more stylistic styles, things that aren't necessarily super realistic. You know, like Lone Echo, I think looks beautiful. Echo Arena, Echo Combat, all the Echo games from Ready at Dawn look really good on Rift. Um, I mean, there's a lot of really pretty VR games. Hey Paradise, um, there is no PSVR release date on this game yet, and there's no word on if the aim controller will be supported. I certainly hope so. It would be a great fit. Yeah, I think Solus Project is a decent comparison point. That game is a little bit more open. It's a very true sandbox, I guess you could say. Um, the survival elements are a much more, I guess I would say if they feel more organic in that game. In this game, I'm not sure the survival elements really add much. It does sort of feel like it's a little tacked on. I'm not sure if this was added later on after the rest of the game was mostly done. Hey. I think I found the ship's black box. Not Rabbit. entirely sure you that, with your scanner? you know, how it, how it fares for the, for the full game. And that would be a yes. Um, Excellent. Solus Project, I think that one, it's, it was kind of built from the ground up to be a survival what, game. exactly? The scanner you're using is a residual sensitive prototype on loan from the Intel division. You'll be doing less scrabbling in the dirt than you're used to. Whenever you come across traces of old logs that left behind a quantum signature, the system will reconstruct the encryption keys used to encode them. It'll even grant you access to ACC recording if their security hasn't been updated. Hmm. How does that even work? That's above your pay grade, soldier. Seriously? Just check the black box, Weston. Yes, ma'am. And as you can see, all these enemies I'm killing, they drop a lot of loot. Um, resources, materials, collagen, keratin, um, different hides and wood and ores and minerals. All those things are things that you use to craft back at your base at different crafting stations to make armor and weapons and ammo and 
um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, which I haven't gotten to the base yet in this, but I'm gonna be there pretty soon. More alien burgers. Hey Paradise, I'm on a 980 Ti. Um, I think I'm currently playing on medium settings because I'm streaming. I didn't want um, to have to worry about any hiccups or issues. Um, but I believe it ran on high for me pretty fine um, last time I was playing. Um, but like I said, right now I'm playing on medium because um, since I'm streaming, I didn't want to have to worry about any hiccups or frame drops during the stream. So I sacrificed the quality a little bit. In-game purchases? No, not that I know of, Gamertag. I believe this is a full standalone product. So you pay 40 bucks and you get the game and you're good to go. And so I'm moving my arms right now to sprint. Oops, I just realized that I got turned around. Here, I'll face towards the camera so you guys can at least kind of see what I'm doing. Oh, this guy, I don't think I have the firepower to take him down yet. I would really like to have two guns, at least two pistols to take on that guy. It's a little hard with just the starter pistol. Hey, Lightbringer, I did try the Welcome to Lightfield demo. It's very impressive. It looks great, very um, visually impressive. I think it's free. You can just go ahead and download it from Steam. Gamertag, yes, they have alien burgers. So as you can see here, these alien burgers, they basically look just like cheeseburgers. I mean, there's no other way to describe them. Um, they were clearly modeled right after cheeseburgers. So you want to check it out? Look at that delicious, all black burnt beef alien cheeseburger right there there you go looks so tasty i'm not going to waste it because my hunger is at 81 i don't need to eat yet um, but if i got hungry that's what the alien burger is for hey gamertag no this is actually a triforce t-shirt a legend of zelda t-shirt Hey Paradise, um, like I said, um, obviously wait for my full impressions of my review. Um, I did say, you know, this, this stream is based on just the opening moments of the game. It does give off a good first impression. I like the opening moments. It um, is a very pretty game. Um, but, you know, obviously I can't give my full thoughts because I'm under embargo. So my review goes live tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., that's where my full review will be with the score and everything else attached. Yes, this is a Zelda t-shirt. It's not Archangel. It's nothing VR related. It's just a Triforce. <clears throat> and um, Hellfire, you asked about other environments. Yeah, there's a lot of really colorful stuff. This is just this opening section here. I'm, I'm inside of a cave, um, but there are some really, really pretty areas. I think I'll actually be getting to some of those pretty soon, hopefully, so you can see some other environments because uh, the game looks fantastic. There's a lot of really nice areas. And uh, you can you can craft a flashlight at the crafting station later on once you get the resources. But this being the beginning of the game, I don't have a way of doing that. Okay, I think this is the end of this zone. Yeah.
How are you liking the game so far, Paradise Decay? Whoops. Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Oh. That's one thing that's annoying is sometimes whenever you spawn into a new region, it'll have you facing towards the way you came, uh, which is really weird and screwy. I, I don't know why they did that. So I have to make sure, okay, and then that's where I came from. Okay, so I'm going to go this way. Yeah, so not all of the animals are harmful. So, you know, like this little bunny guy, these bugs flying around here, they're not going to harm me. But if I wanted, I could totally shoot them still. You know, I can, if I just wanted to. There's no benefit, but you can. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Gamertag. And you will return to this area later, but there's nothing that I can do now, if I recall correctly. Lieutenant, I'm seeing what appears to be an artificial go. structure not far from your location. That's promising. That is promising, right? Hard to say at this point. The architecture looks to be FCR, but wait, I'm picking up movement. Friendly? Unclear. Hang on. Numerous hostiles detected. More barrels. They're swarming all over the target area. If they're attacking critical equipment, you... Seems like the area is clear for the moment. Confirmed. We're not picking up any feral movement either. So, what are you seeing? Walker's combat outpost, but there's no one here. And this wasn't the first attack. Some of the damage is showing signs of age. How bad is it? Is there anything in working condition? Not as far as I can tell. Hell, it looks like the ferals ripped off some components here and there. I'll need a closer look. Oh, this is one of my favorite views, is this giant behemoth beast over here. It is so impressive. It looks so gorgeous inside the headset. The sense of scale is just really good. I'm really a big fan of the environment designs. I think it's very, they're very creative and well done. So this is something that um, I noticed whenever I first played the game. So you see here these windows, right? You know, they look inside of this little command post base station. You know, these windows are very clearly visible from right here standing on these rocks. But for whatever reason, I don't know why they did this. If I go inside, I'm looking at an image of a lake that isn't even animated. It's not moving at all. I have no idea why, what the reason is for that design decision. The same thing goes for this side. It's, you know, there's an image of an area that doesn't exist. I have no idea why it's like this. Such a strange decision. Because if you go back outside, obviously it doesn't look like that. You can even see the flames right there so weird. I have no idea why it's like that. So I was actually able to kill those um, aliens before they even attacked the base. Usually they do some damage, but they didn't even get to attack it. Cheesy is a good word, Hellfire. I would say a lot of the stuff in this game is, can be described as cheesy. A lot of the voice acting and writing is very cheesy and lame. Um, yeah, the, the game just generally doesn't have a very good narrative. Uh, that's definitely not the reason why I would recommend anyone play it, if you are interested at all. I cover more of that in my review. Yeah, these windows are so perplexing. I have no idea why they decided to... Because it's not even animated as a thing. That's what really throws me off, is that this water is not moving the... The trees are not swaying. This is like a 360 image of a world that we never get to see 
put into the windows of this building, even though the sky is open, and the sky itself is also, oh my god, I never noticed that. The sky is a different area too. So the dome here of this base does not match what's actually above it. That is so weird. I have no idea why they did that. Hey, Stumpy Nub, thanks for stopping by. All right. Gonna do some scanning. Heads up. Long range scans suggest more feral activity headed your way. Looks like they're not done with you yet. That's not ideal. The Guess it's time to start hunkering down. That and works. Now I just need some wood and some halicite to get started. All right, I need wood and halicite. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'll stick the excavator up at the top there. Woodchucker up there. All right, got that on. Got that on, good to go. Yeah, I mean, you could be right, Paradise, but it just, it seems so weird because this area looks very nice, you know? Like, it, it looks, it looks pretty. They could have just actually had it show that area. Hey, Hellfire, thanks for stopping by. And Paradise, yeah, you could be right, you know, the portal dimension type stuff, but it should be explained regardless. You know, there should be some explanation for why we're looking into a different area. It's just, it's so weird to me. So here you can see the woodchucker. You shoot this gun at plant life. Um, so like that, those little swaying trees. I, I don't remember if these can be ground up. I don't think so. Uh, but some of the smaller plants can. Um, so here you can see I've got Cassius wood, Ventus wood. Those are some of the resources that, that I'll need. Um, here's another one here. Uh, I need to keep an eye out for ore that I can mine as well. Because I'll need that. Is that? That isn't a rock? Oh, look like one. Okay, here's one right here. Right there. <clears throat> and so this is one of the areas of the game. I talk about this in my review in more detail that I felt like could have used some work, um, some balance, uh, just better balancing, um, better, um, yeah, better balancing, um, kind of padded out better. It just, it just, it feels like such a chore. I wish there was a way to do this faster. Hey, no problem, Lugs. Make sure you check uploadvr.com tomorrow morning for the review. Um, I'm aiming to have a video version of that review up as well. Alright, so I've got enough palisite and One enough quick wood. Fat wood patch coming right up. Right. I'd better see if I can build this inside where it's safe. Let's go make our way inside. Yeah, this is definitely a demanding game, so you could be right. All right, so here we are at the base. Um, so these big squares here are um, crafting stations where I can place benches that let me make ammo, make guns, make armor, different items like that. So you've got space there. Back in that other corner, there's a big space over here. Um, so you can kind of pick and choose and customize how you build your base out, which is nice. I think that's a cool little feature. Um, it looks like I'm getting thirsty, so let's take a 
drink. There we go. Okay, so I'll show you how this is done. I mean, go into your main backpack inventory menu, go to construction. Um, the only thing I can build right now is a material forge. I've got basically just enough to craft and you can reach out and place it. So I can spin it around. Um, the, where it shows the person standing, you wanna make sure that side is facing wherever it is accessible. Um, because if not, you'll have an issue where you're trying to access it from the wrong side and you can't do that. So basically just like that is perfect. So we walk up these stairs right here. I can reach the screen. I can interact with it. I can do pretty much whatever I need to do. I don't know why it's not wanting to turn on right now. Craft some ammunition. There we go. Okay. So I can make small caliber, which is all I need. Uh, let's go ahead and make two, I guess. Still feeling confident about your chances? As soon as I replenish my ammunition, I will. Why? If you're going to dig in, you should bolster your defenses with turret emplacements to cover multiple sectors. We can transmit some basic blueprints to get you started. Yes, ma'am. Got any advice on threats I can expect? We did notice what looked like predatory flyers, but that should come as no surprise. You should already be prepared for ground and air attacks. Roger that. Hey Paradise, no problem. Um, it stuck out. It stuck out a lot to me, but I know it's not going to stick out to everyone. Um, so I can make an equipment station now as well. So I'm definitely going to do that. I liked putting it over here. It just seemed like a good spot. Right there. And so this is where I can make additional weapons. Um, so the X4 Stinger is a gun that I currently have. I need a Halicite, which I'm out of, and Feronium, which is just in the next zone over is where that resource is at. Um, one thing that I really wish that they had is a way to track resources and to make notes of where they are located at. So for example, you know, like the Harpy, which is kind of like an SMG um, automatic type weapon. I wish I could, you know, have the game tell me, okay, you can get Yulefine in this zone, you can get Feronium in this zone, or if I wanted these, um, the shield generators, then I can go get Yulefine in that zone, Platinum in this zone, Blood and from these creatures. Um, I, I think that would be a really good feature. I, I didn't find anything like that, as far as I could tell. Um, I could be missing it, but I don't think there's anything like that. And so there's all different kinds of weapons you can make. Um, in addition to this station, you can also build a cooker to make food, which is, I mean, crazy, crazy important. Um, armor workstation, uh, material forge where you can make ammo and that kind of stuff. Um, later on, I'll unlock some other ones like different turrets and other types of things I can make in my base. If you want to see where your current objective is, all you have to do is put your right hand over your shoulder and it just wants me to explore other parts of the forest is all it says um, right now. I believe I just have to go deeper into the next zone to find this one animal. Um, as you can see here, when you come across the fast travel here is the fast travel location of the network. Approach the platform so to show which locations are unlocked. Each one of these, right hang on, the I'll wait for him to stop to talking. And press the trigger to select it. This will open up a portal behind the platform that will take you to your destination. Okay, there you go. So these are the main primary six core zones. Each one of these has different, you know, sub zones within it. Um, and they're blocked by loading screens. So, you know, if you're in Verdant Path 1, you have to go through a loading screen to get back to Haven or to get to Verdant Path 2. And it goes on from there. Um, so there's different zones split up that way. And uh, you can fast travel from this hub here, which is nice. It makes exploration a little bit easier, but I do wish that they had um, better mapping and tracking features, you know, to tell you where resources are located for farming and, you know, gathering resources to make better guns and stuff. 
Um, that feels like it's a, mi a missing element that would really help in the late game whenever you're having to gather a bunch of resources. Okay. So I'll play for a little bit longer, but I do believe I'm getting pretty close to where I'm supposed to stop live streaming. Um, but we're going to go forward into the next couple zones. Uh, there's a neat little bridge puzzle that I wanted to show you guys before I get off. Um, but yeah, like I said, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. is when my review will be live at UploadVR.com. And as you can see in the chat there, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook to get notified when it posts. I will have a video version of that same review. And we're also planning on putting out... Oh, whoops. There we go. We're also planning on putting out some gameplay footage of our co-op session. Which is going to be the same footage that you're seeing here, basically. But it'll just be co-op. And it'll have, you know, us discussing some other elements of the game. Okay, I need to eat a burger. Whoops, I think I ate two. Oh well. Okay. Yeah, the X Breaker, I think is what it's called. Okay, I think we're gonna get into a brighter area pretty soon. Oh, crap. Oh, no. <clears throat> Alright. I didn't lose my shield all the way, so I didn't lose any health, thankfully. Oh, wow. I remember this spot. This is one of my favorite vistas. It just has such a cool arc to the planet and the rings, and it is so pretty. Yeah, that makes sense, Paradise. I could see it getting claustrophobic or annoying for some people. I like it. I think it makes it feel like I'm actually wearing a helmet. It's a little more immersive for me. Um, I don't leave it on for sickness reason, reasons at all. I just, I like it. I think it makes it feel like I'm wearing a helmet. But yeah, you can turn it off. This is a nice change of scenery. I see you've made it to the crystals. Good to know you're watching my back. Is this the area that you're you talking about, about Paradise? Or We've been taking readings on the jet clusters for a along. while. They give off quite a distinct spectral signature, which doesn't seem to be dangerous, but they're incompatible with your construction equipment. You should leave them alone. They could cause some side effects we haven't detected. Where's your sense of adventure? Sometimes you just have to find things out the old-fashioned way, with your own two hands. Suggestion no. The Falconer's long-range scanners are more than adequate for our current needs. You should come planet-side and stretch your legs a bit, Captain. Spend too much time up in space, and you're going to end up a crotchety old woman. As opposed to becoming a distracted smartass? I'm going to pretend you didn't say anything, Lieutenant. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, okay, so you're not very far at all. Um, you have quite a bit of game left ahead of you. Uh, 
there's there's a cool little bridge puzzle that I wanted to show on the stream before I stop. I'm almost there, and that's near the spot that they were they told me that I couldn't stream past anyway, so it makes for a good stopping point. There we go, I think it's right up here. Oh man, I freaking love the jellyfish. They're so cool looking. Like I said, those freaking Vespid bug things, you gotta look out for those guys because they have a really bad habit of just sneaking up on you and hovering up above where you don't see them or off to the side and then attacking whenever you're not aware that they're there. Yeah, Paradise, I would say this game probably has easily over 10 hours of gameplay. Um, a lot of it is a little tedious backtracking. You know, I go over a lot of this in my review. Um, but in terms of content, enemies. there is quite a bit. There's a lot of stuff to see and do. And it's a very, very pretty game, you know. This is one of my favorite zones, but it's far from the only one that catches your eye. Okay. So this little bridge puzzle was a neat part. And there's a, there's a few areas like this. But um, there's not a whole lot of puzzles. I, I, I kind of wish there had been more um, to just mix things up. You know, it's nice to not just constantly be shooting stuff all the time. Um, so you can see those are going to connect to the bridge here. All right, so these platforms come out, right? Some of them are blinking and then they disappear. So you have to walk across this bridge, looking down, you know, at this huge, vast, you know, chasm down below, being careful not to be standing on one of these whenever it disappears. It's not overly difficult. You know, like I didn't, it's, I never died at this part, but it's just so impressive visually. It just looks so nice. All right, so this is kind of the halfway point. Um, this next one has a lot more that disappear though, as you can see. The vast majority disappear on this next section. go all right i don't i don't know if you can kill the jellyfish oh my god you can i never bothered trying wow okay well i think we're gonna stop here so i appreciate everyone taking the time to check out the stream um like i've been saying my review for this game for seeking dawn will be live tomorrow at uploadbr.com at 8 a.m pacific um, you can see the full review with our score and all my impressions of the game on the site at that time. Um, the game does launch on July 12th, which is the following day on Thursday for Rift, Vive, and Windows VR headsets. There's no date for a PSVR version yet, but it is supposed to be in development. Hope you enjoyed watching these opening moments of Seeking Dawn. Um, there's a lot more to this game than what I showed here, but you, did, you should have gotten a good feel for what the general gameplay and rhythm is like. Um, so I really appreciate you guys checking out the stream and stopping by, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so you do get notified of all of our future streams and, you know, like this video on YouTube. We try to stream at least two or three times a week. So um, definitely thanks for stopping by and checking things out. And uh, one last question here, Paradise. Have I tried Primordian? Um, I, I don't think I have. I, I, I'm aware of Primordian, but I haven't tried it. I'll have to check it out. Hey, Bull, thanks for stopping by. That guy as well, thanks for stopping by. 
Uh, yeah, you did miss the stream, but you can go back and rewatch it if you want. Um, there's a lot of questions that got answered that you might have been wanting to ask. You can always find me on Twitter as well if you want to ask any questions. And thanks for stopping by Paradise Arcade, and as well as everyone else. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.